All right, welcome back down to Chiefs Pit, Timmy Petty, Mark Petty, and Richie Petty. And I've been getting a lot of good comments from people, and Timmy and Mark's been getting them too, and we appreciate you tuning in. And people are really liking getting us a different side of the Petty history. So we're kind of uh, enjoying giving you that different side of it because you've heard the uh, these stories and that story, but we're trying to give you some different aspects of it. So trying to be... Uh, just give you some entertainment more or less but uh we're going to dive into some of our daddies maurice petty some of his en endeavors and you know you know him as an engine builder and probably the most successful engine builder with over 270 wins as an engine builder but the man also was a a, a body man <laughs> a chassis man and truck driver truck driver and, and team owner team owner yeah he, he you know, took care of all the bills yep. yeah so uh and, and, he, and he drove some, so we're going to dive in. I think he, everybody's always throwing these numbers around. And he was part of 10 championships with, with Grandfather 3 and uh, Richard 7, so he's part of 10 championships. And what do you say about the Daytonas, nine Daytonas? Yep, nine. Uh, yep, but the, the cool part for me is. Daytona our, 500. Yep, our dad actually, you know, he, he worked cup racing from 49, I guess, as they was kids, whenever See, Grandfather the very first one, but, yeah. But until in '83 was when he didn't work in cup racing anymore. Right. But for me, it's impressive enough to be a part of ten Daytona 500s. But he was part of ten of the first twenty-one, maybe something like that. Or so almost in, almost worked on half of the Daytona yeah, 500 winners at one point. Yeah. I just I always thought that was a cool stat. Yeah. Yeah. A third. He was part of a third of the championships ever run up till in '79 there because '49. Yep. And then like almost a. a like you said, of the Daytona 500, so he he was he was a a big part of NASCAR, and he was a big part of just racing in general. But uh, you know, we were doing an ARCA car one time, and uh, we was doing some body work, and he got in there with that Bondo. You remember that? And he he shaked Well, he it. watched us fumble with it for a while. It was like we didn't know you could do. Let me have that. Here's how you do it. We didn't know they you all do it wrong. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't know you was a body man. He, he laughed and said, man, I'm, I, I can do it all. And he wasn't bragging. He was just saying, they, yep. him and Richard. At one time, they had to do right, it all. Right, they, they had to well, do it Well, how about like when we'd go to Daytona and test, and he would make, he would, he'd go, he'd show us how to make them different body, body panels. Oh, yeah. Remember, we went to test Daytona that one time, and we borrowed Norman Negri's templates. Yes. And he made us take a magic marker, a Sharpie, and outline every template, and he yep. said, "All right, now go work in areas there's not a mark." Right. And but, they call that the gray area. <laughs> yeah. But, but then we get to Daytona, and he's telling us to do it, and he's down there fabricating oh, yeah. like one of the. I mean, it's like. Yeah, wow. he really enjoyed that yeah, part and, of it. And, well, he, he was. He was an innovator. He was good at. Well, you that know, kind of stuff. and I'm not going to mention any names, nor there was one particular team down there testing with us, and they were over, and we we kept working on that that right front fender and left front fender. And pushing it out and bubbling it and stuff, and they was kind of snickering at us. But well, we were using a nitrogen bottle yeah, to you, put our bins. You got to realize they had brakes, presses, <laughs> and rollers up in yeah. their truck, and Daddy's down there showing us how to form yeah, it yeah. on a on a nitrogen bottle. And we, it, it I think I think by the end of the day we picked up about three tenths, and they wasn't laughing anymore. They come over and ask, "Could they measure our bins?" And Daddy was like, "Well, yeah, sure. I ain't got no problem with it." Right, right. But uh, and yeah. we knew them all. So. Oh yeah, it was no big deal. But it was just funny. They were laughing, kind of snickering, like, well, "Look at what they're doing." And we was actually making gains, so that was. He, he, he showed us and that, what and, kind of fabrication. And that was, was for what we had. It was tough to make gains because it was pretty. You know, the the, the box was pretty tight. Now you know, working in the engine part of it, working on machines and stuff like that. And he'd come back here and you know we'd run a lathe, a mill, or a hone or whatever. He'd always have good ideas and stuff, and he could tell you, and he could run the machines if he wanted to, but he was also. He, he just had a vision. He could, he could see what he wanted and he'd tell you. And, and sometimes you'd be like, well, that ain't going to work. Well, speaking of that, you know, that's how he taught for, for the texture or the finish. He used his thumbnail. I don't know if we've talked about oh, that. Oh, holding blocks. Yeah, and yep. you, you've seen him do it. Yeah. But he'd yep. take it, and, and if it wasn't rough enough or exactly, well, it really wasn't too rough, but that's the way he would feel it is the texture. He could tell by his fingernail if the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the piston ring was going to seal or not. If and, he didn't have that feeling, then he would tell you that ain't gonna sit. And up. while we're talking about that, uh, a lot of times he'd be up there with, it, and they would make their own tootsie rolls, you know, yep. the, yep. the, the cartridge rolls. Yep. But he would just, and he'd be in there honing pistons out, and then he'd take the pin and go. Yep. He'd, he'd just feel it. He just knew it. 
But here's the deal. He, he got on to us about, he said, we won more races without these That's machines right. Right. than we did with them because he was feeling. Well, it's the same way with just, just putting that uh, on the piston pins. You'd be back there with a the lead. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he, he, he had it. Oh, yeah, when he, when he told you to take the yeah. uh, Scotch Brite, right. put the little just, hatch. Just the hatch. He wanted a little bit of cross yeah, hatch in it. Yeah. Very light, but it, it was he had to see it. But, uh, you know, and then we get into our racing and before – He'd, he'd always have good ideas on springs and, and, and sway bars and stuff. He was a chassis man. But we bump always. Bump stops. Bump, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> some of the stuff he come up with. We even want to tell that. Yeah. Right. Else is another. It don't matter. But, but, it. but I, we, we bragging on Daddy about. Yeah. But he, he was well-rounded. What he You know, he drove some, but he was known for being a mechanic. But. Even Uncle Richard, they said, was a great fabricator, oh, yeah. right? And, oh, yeah. and good well, and yeah. we know how smart he oh, yeah. is on the race cars and all. But but he ended up being the driver, and Daddy ended up working on. But I, I guess Grandfather made them learn every aspect of that race car. I was fixing to say, if and he was, so they they both could really do all you of. You know it. how tough Lee was on us. Could you imagine being his sons? Well, you know what, what they what Daddy always say would. We'd say, boy, grandfather sure is rough. He'd say, y'all ain't seen nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's he's, he's, he's a teddy bear, and we're oh, like, yeah. that's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't believe it. No, no. but Dad, Daddy, he was and Richard. They were they were two of the original people to see the very first races from '49. Lee and Julie took out Roadmaster uh, to the Charlotte, and you know Lee flipped it and all that. That number thirty-eight, and uh, but they were until he died, he'd seen. A bunch of races, and that's like Richard Petty. I say now he's probably the only one left that's been at the very first race. Well, ain't nobody probably ever seen more live races no, with their the, own eyes than that's Richard right, Petty. That's right. And so we were going to talk about that is well, driving. All right, right, but that was where I was going with his yeah, chassis, yeah, sorry. with his chassis knowledge. Was we forgot that reason why he was good on chassis is because he was a driver, you know. And we did a little research and come up with it, but all the Petties that ran a uh, a Cup race, a Grand National, the hard tops. Daddy had the best average finish of everybody in their debut race. I think he ended up eighth. I think Kyle in his first one in 79 in Talladega, I think he was ninth. And Richard and Lee were like 17th in their first cup, you know, the hard tops. Right. Now, Richard had a better finish in one of the convertible races, but the hard top Grand National, Maurice had the best uh, average for the debut. I always thought that's pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, we, we, that's another thing I like. Everybody's learning what we're telling them, but we're learning as that's we go, as we too, because yeah. it causes us to dig up some and stuff. And you said that he had told you a couple of stories about his... Well, uh, he, <laughs> I'm sorry to put can, it all on can you. you. Can, no, you tell, but, can you tell me? No, can you elaborate? <laughs> this, is, this is... All right, here's what's neat for me. Yeah. Is Daddy told me a story about when he's driving one time at a dirt race. And then by me working up here at the Petty Garage... Right. ...the museum... I get to see Dale every once in a while. Well, Dale told me this story one day, and it was the exact same story Dad had told, and it was, but it was from different perspectives. But basically what it was is it a dirt track, and it was real dusty, muddy, whatever. And Dale said, Daddy, come in the pits. And he kept <laughs> hollering at me, clean my windshield. So Dale said, you know, he cleaned outside the windshield. And looking there, is that okay? And Daddy's hollering at him, you know, Oh, Daddy wouldn't holler, would he? <laughs> yeah. oh. Imagine these two going at it yeah, in their yeah, 20s. Yeah, yeah. But um, Dale said, he said, I cleaned the inside of the windshield. And he said, Daddy was just raising cane. I, I can imagine what he was cleaning the blankety-blank windshield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyways, Dale finally said he looked, and he said, you know, Daddy had to wear glasses because he had that stigmatism. Right, right. But he said it was his glasses that was all oh, muddied up. Good. It wasn't the windshield. <laughs> But Daddy told that story, and Dale told it too. But um, that, you know, well, that's Daddy, a perfect story. But Daddy always said to me, probably couldn't have. He, he did great driving, but he said that stigmatism he had probably Kinda, was what would have held him up. Yeah, as being the. A but driver. you know, with him coming along, and Grandfather was big on. They had to be twenty one when they started. Richard was twenty one, so Daddy had to wait a few years, and he's twenty one. I think Daddy's first uh, race there was sixty or something. But his driving career started about the time grandfather got hurt. And so that kind of put us a damper on Daddy's because they were just Richard, trying to survive. When Richard Mars come back from Daytona in 61, they left their daddy and their mother down there in Daytona. That's the owners of their team, more or less. They had to come back and figure out how are we going to make this work? 
and they did. But I mean, give them all the credit in the world. Them two went in there and started figuring it out. Daddy drove a little bit, but he'd get a car ready. And like if Richard had trouble, because Richard was going to be the money car, then Richard, if he wrecked his car the week before, then Richard got to drive Daddy's. Daddy was. It's kind of like who's leading the race. That's who you're going to pit first. Right. It's like it's the, the same rule. Re, yeah. Richard left Daytona and became the, the number one driver. At the time, Lee was the number one driver. Yeah. But they left him down there. So Daddy had to. And then Pascal would drive the 41 some and on the bigger races and things. But uh, he just. It was just bad timing. I mean, if, if things would have. And don't kept, figure maybe he was running them little races because. They, Yes. I ain't going to call it a starting part. Right, it's kind of, yeah. But they could get money for that spot right. and didn't have to pay a driver he a had percentage. His, right. his best, he never won a race, but his best finish was a third. And I think it was a Spartanburg or something yeah. down there. But he, uh, he he was a good driver. He, he just, said he loved the dirt races. Yeah, for sure. Because he liked to go in there and, and throw yeah. it sideways and then steer into it. But I remember him telling me the story about the right before that before lee got hurt in 61 it, lee won his last race in a subcompact race down there in daytona in a value yeah well daddy had been working all <laughs> winter getting that value ready because lee had told him you're gonna that's gonna be your day you're gonna go run that road race you're gonna run this net and he said they got down there to daytona and lee said i'm gonna drive that car and end up <laughs> right looking winning, too good he ended up winning the race yeah, and, that, and that ended up being lee petty's last win in any kind of motorsports so that was kind of Good and bad, not in that sense. I remember. But Daddy, he was, he was, he was, uh, he's still a little bit uh, perturbed that that, that was going to be his, yeah. his ride. He lost it. But I bet they was excited to see Grandpa oh, get was, back in a car. Was. And speaking of, you know, we're, we're doing a little show and tales here and there now. This is a helmet uh, that Daddy drove with that back in the 60s. So there's our show and tale for today. So. Uh, Butch Stalker up here that grew up around here and I think we might have mentioned him before in one of our little deals here, but uh, he he told a story about Daddy getting a car ready and <laughs> and then making Butch go out here and yeah. clean it because yeah. you know he had Butch cleaning parts and all, and, and he said they wasn't ever good enough. It, you know, no matter how clean it was, Daddy would find a little speck or something on the same way with a car. When I go out here, I guess they took the thing out and spun it around in the dirt out here on the dirt road and come yeah. by. He said, "Now clean it up, Butch." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Butch, guess, Butch thinks it's the greatest thing. I guess it was 64 when they went down to Daytona and they, they with the Hemi. Yeah. And they won the first uh, Daytona for, for Richard. Yep. And that's probably one of Daddy's most proudest moments in his racing career was them winning that race. Oh, it had to be all of them. Yeah. Yeah, but, that, yeah, but yeah, Daddy, he really he, talked he a lot really about, talked about that Well, they had, they had pretty much struggled, even though 61 and 62 was probably okay years, but when that Hemi come along in '64, it, it put them on the map. Yeah, the, the whole the whole crowd. Yeah, there was, and I've I've got it around here somewhere, and I have to look it up. <coughs> but there's a newspaper article, and I, I guess '61 or '62. There, Richard um, run pretty good down there at Charlie. Might have set the pole or something down there. But it was funny because you read the article, and I, everybody in there, all the old teams was. Uh, they felt so sorry for them boys because they've struggled so hard. So it's good to see them do good. And I sit there and read it now, and looking at the, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Those guys that was pulling for them, and that, then it, I guess about uh, twenty years later, they wouldn't, they wouldn't pull yeah, for well, them anymore. A couple, couple years later, he sixty-seven. Them yeah, huh? never ever raced in sixty-seven there. But uh, anyway, Daddy, he was a well-rounded uh, a man, and you know, he he doesn't get the credit for being a team owner. A, a chassis man or crew chief, he gets a lot of credit for being an engine man. But he was a driver, of everything. He was. He was and between well him and the king, and and Dale, I mean, they were good strategists at, oh, yeah. at the at you know oh, counting absolutely. backwards in the race and all that. And kind of where we learned it from is, you know, you you, you think about it, what's going to happen, and then think backwards. And and it it's confusing sometimes, but it works. They're always a step ahead of you. Right. Even even though you thought she was catching yeah. on. But no matter, I don't care if he's working the yard or at the racetrack or whatever, them guys are always a step ahead of us. And, and they're and they always, they always watching us, too, to make yeah. sure that you uh, will get by with something today. Well, no, you didn't get that by with something. That Timmy ain't never going to learn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, yeah. that's what I heard a lot. I guess uh, that there's another episode for you, and that's some good memories, and we got. If some anybody's more. got any memories, because yeah. I mean, I unfortunately never seen Daddy driving in well, a real either. event. I didn't either. I came along, you know, after the fact, and uh, you know, it's it, it's always here good to hear other people tell what little you know, and, and I, unfortunately, we're losing a lot of those guys. Oh yeah, so. they're, they're, yeah. 
like the World War II veterans, uh, the old veterans of racing are dying off at an alarming rate. So right. And, like and, the, and, 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 and that's the importance of this right here is, is documenting these stories so people will remember it. And I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're setting ourselves up as being, the, the, you know, the, the go-to guys on the history of the, of the patties, I think. Don't y'all? I mean, we're, what, what, we're, we're, we're showing stories that nobody talks about. Well, it's yeah. definitely uh, our memories and what we've been told. Yeah. Yep. Well. Yeah. We we uh we thanks we're, for the comments. Yeah, we're trying hard and, and give us some give Just us some comments and uh, subscribe for us. Yep.